want to talk about Edge? Yeah, fuck it. Let's go ahead and talk about Edge because uh, you could put that thumbnail up. Isn't he getting current attention? Uh, yeah, he, he just came back for a... Uh, he had a couple of matches with Orton this year. Um, I think he's injured again. No, I'm a... Well, of course he's injured. Look at his age. You know what I mean? And look at how long it's been since he's been in the ring. And he quit because of an injury. So it's even going to be harder to come back at this age. They should be agented and they should be told and, and encouraged to not do some big time shit because of their age. Orton included. Which I think he's starting to learn to. But don't try to keep up with these other cats. AJ Styles is older but he's not Edge's age. And AJ also is a smaller guy. You know what I mean? Maybe, maybe not today, but in this, you know, when we're talking about their entire career, Edge probably carried 40 pounds on AJ, 50 pounds on AJ. So all those years too, you got to take into consideration what that does to a man's body. They're not wanting to see you go out there and uh, Edge at your age and do hurricane, or not expecting it, hurricane and crazy bumps and crazy spots and shit. You don't have to. You have the charisma to entertain and the fucking name value. They're not going to feel like you fucked them if you give them 10 minutes of exciting shit that's you rather than 20 minutes just to prove I'm not an old prick anymore. You know what I'm saying? I know this from experience as a guy who was booking Bundy, Snook, and Honky Tonk, man, while they could still work and go. At booking Dusty Rhodes while he could still work and go. You know, I know what I know from what I saw. And, you know... Edge has got a major, major push, and then he got that shit from Vikings, which is one of the top-rated shows. So, 1997. Uh, I want—I don't know if I got called by Chief or by Tony Garea. I had stopped working for WWE. Again, the reason I stopped doing work for them and pushing to try to get a job was because I was making money in the real world, in the business world, making $200,000 a year, couldn't figure out how to get a manager to run my business to where I could go and make 80000 to 90000 as a mid-carter because of my size at the time in 1993. So I just didn't push. I kind of gave up, you know. I don't know how it happened, but for some reason they were calling me direct to come and work. They made some contact with somebody else I don't know who, I don't really give a fuck who, uh, to book some Chicago area guys to work at the uh, Horizon and Rockford, you know. And uh, I didn't mind going. You know, I, I like going. I, I earned it, the right to go see some of my friends. Anyway, so he says, I, I'm going to put you with this kid. And this was the opinion of the kid. He's been with us on a per night deal. He's probably making less than you tonight. Okay. He's kind of the shits up to this point. See if you can put together a match with him and get him over. If not, they're probably going to shit can him. You know? That's the truth. That's 100% motherfucking honest. I don't know who this is, but you're paying me to carry somebody. You're asking me. World Wrestling Entertainment is putting its trust in me to put this match together and carry this guy. Make or fucking break. Now, I don't know if he knew this or not. I'm pretty fucking sure he knew this or not. I think he was making $200 a night, per night, not a contract, okay? So I got with him a little bit. Nice fucking guy. Just a nice guy. I like because he's got long hair like me. He must like the same type of music as me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nice, younger guy, you know? At that point, probably 10 years younger than me. He came from Canada, you know? And I just went up to him and I said, okay, man, well, Tony makes the ingratiation and tells him to listen to me. I'll get him over, you know. So I says, are you a baby face or a heel? He make sure nobody's around. He looks at me and says, I don't know. They haven't told me what they want me to do. I said, well, if I'm going to get you over tonight, I'm, then you're going to be a baby face. It'll be a lot easier for me, you know. So we put this shit together, no overthinking, do what I do, do what I did as a fucking worker. This is my job, this is my focus. My focus isn't to go out there and get my fucking shit in, Justin. You know? They're not looking at me. They're not looking at me, they're looking at this kid. That means it's his time and this counts. 
You know, I, I was going to say I don't know him from Adam, but it's funny his name's Adam, right? <laughs> I, w- I would have thought, I would assume that he was who you were talking about. Yeah, Edge, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think he was the Edge up to that point, and they just dropped the. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I know he, uh, at least according to his documentary, he took the name from the Edge from uh, U2, and then just dropped the the along the way. They dropped the the. Or they I think, dropped the the. I yeah. think he was the Edge still, but that night he was Edge. Yeah, because so, they, did, they didn't want to hire uh, Sexton Hardcastle. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That was his name before he broke into WWE. Oh, okay. So, uh, long story short, great fucking match. Met in the middle. Great fucking match with a great fucking story. It was funny because his ass puckered a little bit because when we went out there, they were in Rockford. It's a weird fucking crowd. A good crowd. They're a great wrestling community. If we ever open up, like I says, for Friday nights, uh, I'm going to go to Rockford or we're going to go to well, whatever. That was one place too. But Rockford, dude, that's where you want to be. I know because I had television on the UPN station up there for a year. You know, I know those fans. Um, and the people. I love Rockford. Winnebago County's rough, but not for long. They're going to make some changes up there and it's not going to be unsafe no more. So anyway... I do what I do. I got over, you know. Got the kid comfortable out there. We got his fucking ass over like a motherfucker, you know. And I even forget what his fucking finish was then, but I, we got a copy of this dark match we're not supposed to have. So I come back, and the first one to greet me and say, fuck, man, that's uh, the best he's looked was Jeff Jarrett. You know, he's my friend, you know. That was cool. So then my old friends... Percival Pringle, a.k.a. Paul Bearer, and uh, uh, they grabbed me, man. I mean, it was cool as fuck, you know. Foley and them are waiting. They're like like my friends, like my real friends, you know, and I told you some of the shit in the past with Foley and who I had my fuck or fourth match with and Percy Pringle, you know, who I was in Dallas with. Um, Percy helped work to get me over down there as a baby face at the end for world class. Um, so Foley says something, and I think he's, you know, just breaking balls, you know what I mean? Like I says, I had no aspirations to work there anymore, Justin. I did it because I was making 200 grand a year. Why in the fuck would I need that? You know what I mean? And uh, he says, dude, that was fucking awesome. You know, he, he tells me, that kid is green. You know, he worked a handful of matches. Last night he worked wherever they were with uh, a local guy and it was the same old story these local guys they put him with they won't put him with anybody that can fucking carry him or get him over and all those guys do is steal on him he's too green to fucking know it you went out there you put the story together and got that motherfucker over this is the best look they've had at that guy you should be proud and I said well great man you know me you gotta get you step in the ring with old Rand you gotta step it up or not she goes you're not fucking kidding stop saying that like a joke you're a great worker and then Percy too he says get over here get over here you realize what you did for that kid? You know what I mean? They're putting me over like a motherfucker. I'm like, fuck, come on, I'm going to cry now. Stop it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know? And, and Percy had tried to get me hired up there 10 times, 20, 10, 10, 12 times over his course of the year, uh, uh, his career. 